Mm, mm, mm. Brilliant. We move on to the next one, which is minimization. Mm-hmm. Minimization. So, <laughs> how does that look like? So, minimizing, particularly again with any trauma, really, but particularly childhood trauma, minimizing mm. looks like. It's, it's what we're saying to ourselves. We will often say it to other people as well, but it's the biggest impact is that we are minimizing to ourselves um, initially. And so that can look like it's not that bad. It only happened once. Mm. Um, or it was only one person. Or at least I was eight and not three. Um, at Mm. least I wasn't hit Uh, lots of different Mm. ways, but we're basically taking our experience and making it smaller, making it seem like it's Mm. not that big of a deal. And while it serves a purpose (laughs) and a very important (laughs) purpose at the time, Mm. because if Mm. we actually allowed ourselves to take in the reality of the significance of what this means, particularly when it's something that you're faced with on a day-to-day basis, like something happening in your home um, Mm. or regularly in your extended family or something like that. If we had to take in the reality of that experience, those experiences and what it means, Quite literally, we, none of us who experience childhood trauma Mm. would be able to come out of childhood intact, like emotionally and physically intact, because it would be too, too much. Like people talk about like a psychotic Mm. break or something like that. If we had to take in the reality of those experiences. And this can be true too, for if there's a lot of um, like violence in your community, that can also be a similar type of situation because again, you have no control and you're faced with pain and potentially life-threatening. And again, as a child, your brain isn't developed. You can't discern Mm. the difference between actually potentially losing your life or losing the love or trust of this person that you care about. Um, Mm. So we need to be able to do that. It serves a really important purpose. The problem is that when we do that, and this can actually happen too, like if you have a parent that maybe has an addiction or has depression or isn't around Mm. a lot, um, children can minimize the impact of that. Like, well, it's not that big of a deal or, well, I know that they love me, so it doesn't really matter. Mm. But the reality is that even in those situations, it does matter. It has a profound impact. So as we go through our lives, because we have minimized this, we believe that it's not a big deal, that it really hasn't Mm. or shouldn't have an impact on us. That, that that has no bearing on our experience in our lives. But it does, and it shows up in lots of different ways. And instead mm. of being able to create the connection and understand that and then do, to work, do the work to heal it, we end up believing that we're bad, we're weak, we're undeserving, Why am I struggling like this? Because it was such a long time ago and it wasn't that big of a deal. Mm. I cannot tell you how many people, how many versions of minimizing (laughs) I have heard over the years. And a lot of them are very similar. Um, But for example, one thing that I hear so often from people that experienced interpersonal childhood trauma is, well, it, but it wasn't my father. It wasn't my Mm. mother. And Mm. somehow that means that it's not that big of a deal because they look at other people that have experienced abuse by a mother or father. And well, 
that's really bad. But what I experienced isn't, and it is as bad in many ways. It is completely just as bad. Mm -hmm. When you Mm -hmm. believe that, well, it's not that bad. And look at this person who was abused by their father and look how well they're doing. What is wrong with me that I'm struggling like this because of this, or it, you know, it was one time or it wasn't, you know, it was when I was five to 15, it wasn't from two to 17, Mm. right? Like people will Mm. find a way to minimize their experience because it's how we are able to believe that it's not really that bad so that we can cope Mm. day to day and show up as if everything is okay. And do you think for children, partly the reason why we do it, well, yeah, many of us do it, they do it, (laughs) is because it allows us to have that attachment still. Because if I really, to to see, for example, I'm just saying, if I was to really see my father for, for example, the abused person that he was, I would dis, uh, I would dis myself from him when I actually need him. So I need to kind of say, oh, he only hit me once. At least then it's okay and I can still have that attachment with him just to kind of survive childhood. (laughs) Without a doubt. Mm. Absolutely. And I would say that denial plays into that as well. Denial can be a big reason why we do Mm. that. So I'm glad you mentioned that. And it can also play into um, another coping mechanism that we'll talk about as well. But without a (laughs) doubt, what I was talking about, like our self-protective part, um, and our, our ability to go on as if everything is okay, we need to be able to do exactly what you just mentioned. We can't accept the reality that this person that we have to rely on, that we love, that is saying mm. that they love us, um, that is supposed to protect us. We cannot accept that that person is the one hurting us. Like we don't have the mm. developmental capacity to kind of wrap our heads around to hold both of those things at the same time. We literally do not have the developmental capacity to do that. Mm, mm. And when you kind of in that environment as well as a child, when you become an adult and you get into relationship, when similar thing is happening, you're just going to still minimize it. Be like, oh, he's not really that bad. Or oh, she's not really that bad. Even yeah. when they are, because you like obviously you say it's, it's a romantic relationship you're like okay i need my partner so i just minimize <laughs> yes. the, the say bad things that they're doing so at least that way i'm still in a relationship even though in reality it is bad <laughs> absolutely and i think that is an important thing to recognize too with all of these coping mechanisms and that's a, a great example of this that the coping mechanisms we develop early in our lives they continue throughout our lives. Mm. (laughs) So we find ourselves often doing, you know, saying the same kinds of things to ourselves in similar types of situations, because that's what feels real. That's what Mm. we believe to be real. And so we continue those patterns throughout until we're able Mm. to (laughs) do the work to heal it. Mm. Mm, until something happens, <laughs> like 